I'm John Brugan. I'm the general director here at the St. Augustine Alligator Farm. I've got my friend Zora with me, and we're all about adventure here. Uh, we really enjoy showing people what the world looks like in all of its different forms. Uh, Zoro's from South America, and you can see part of our South America exhibits from our adventure courses. So we actually have two courses here. Uh, you can try the course. The smaller course is our Sepik River course, and that takes about an hour to do. If you're really adventurous, you can try our two-hour Nile River course, uh, and you get to see a whole lot of the zoo from up above, which is a wonderful prospect. All right, Zoro, we'll see you later, alligator. <laughs> Hey, my name's Scott Brown. I'm the manager, designer, and builder here at Crocodile Crossing at the St. Augustine Alligator Farm, our unique rope course. And this is one of my very best friends, Maxine. And we're going to ask Maxine a few questions about the rope course today. Maxine, is it fun? Whee! Maxine thinks it's awesome. Is it a lot of fun, Maxine? She agrees. It's a ton of fun. And for those of you that think it might not be for you and it might be a little bit scary, Maxine, should you ever be afraid? No. Maxine says, don't be afraid. We're all professionally trained. We do this every single day. Put your trust in us and we'll take good care of you. We'll see you soon at Crocodile Crossing. All right, and then we have this waiver here. I need you to fill it out front and then back, okay? You have to be eight years old and 52 inches or taller and weigh less than 250. You do also have to be wearing fully enclosed tennis shoes with laces, no open toed slits on the side. They have to be fully enclosed with laces. We do have shoes to rent though. We do recommend making a reservation. You can call ahead or you can even make a reservation online. We're open seven days a week, 365 days a year from 8.45 to 2.45, every hour in between on the 45 minute mark. But when you go up on the course, no cell phones, cameras, nothing with a battery can go up there unless you have a GoPro with a chest harness. If you don't have a chest harness, we might have one here for you to rent. Also, no loose articles up on the course, no hats, headgear of any kind, no scarves, and no chewing gum. Sunglasses are at your own risk, or glasses. We also have free lockers. All right, thank you. And then just print your name, age, and sign right there for me. When you're done with your adventure, you can purchase t-shirts, hats, canteens, tumblers, patches, magnets, towels if you're a little bit sweaty, and photos. All right. Here's your wristband, here's your harness, and then here's your gloves, and Molly's gonna help you into it. Hi, welcome to Crocodile Crossing. My name's Bobby, and I'm gonna be your safety operator today. I'm going to show you how everything on your harness works and how to use it. I'm going to go through the practice course here to show you how that's done. As I finish explaining it, I'll have everybody go through and practice so that you're comfortable and I'm comfortable. I'll then initial on your wristband that says I've seen you do everything correctly. We send you up on the course, let you have lots of fun today. That being said, the course is all self-guided. You're going to be moving your equipment all on your own. Not to worry though, because one of us in the green t-shirts does follow from the ground to supervise, just making sure that you're doing it correctly or to help you out along the way if you have any questions. So we have a short course and a long course. Our short course is going to take around 45 minutes to an hour to go through. It has nine zip lines, 16 obstacles. And the long course, that's going to take around an hour and a half to two hours to go through. That one has 16 zip lines and 27 obstacles going to heights of about 50 feet. All right, folks, and just keep in mind, this is a family park, so we're going to ask for no profanity while you're up on the course. And while you're up there, we're going to ask that you don't horse play on the obstacles as well. If you want to go ahead and take your gloves, we're going to put those on to make sure your hands are staying safe. On the side of your harness, you're going to have a pulley here. And the way this works is simply by sliding down that gate and squeezing the gate open. It's a fairly simple two-step process. Once you show me that you can do that, you can go and hook that right back onto your harness belt. And on the other side, at the end of that black rope, you're going to have this silver metal piece. This is going to be called your safety hook. You'll notice it makes a circular shape here with a very narrow groove in one side. There's a set of bolts above and below where that groove is located. We have here what's called a continuous belay system. Kind of a fancy way of saying once you start the course, you can't ever disconnect at any point in time. The way that this works, you're going to see a piece of cable here with a loop around it. That's going to be a beginning or an ending point. Simply take your safety hook all the way around that metal loop. 
As you move it along the course, you're going to pass this along three different types of plates. We're going to call this a T plate here. It looks like an upside down letter T. The way that this works, you're going to simply take the gap of your safety hook and line it up with the flat part of this plate. And you're going to bring this silver hook all the way around that metal piece. It's helpful to use two hands. When you line the gap of your safety hook up just right with the flat part of that plate, just enough room to slide on through to the next section, but the gap of your hook is not large enough to ever let you disconnect from the system once you begin. Very, very cool how that works. All right, so right here we're gonna have a straight plate here in a straight line. You're gonna simply take your safety hook right on over, and if you line the gap of your safety hook up, up towards the sky, that's gonna let you slide past the flat part right there, just like so, and moving on to the next plate. All right, moving right along here. Right here, we're gonna have a cross plate. The cross plates allow you to go in multiple directions on the course, not that you're choosing, because the color of your wristband is gonna indicate which direction you'll need to go. If you have a red wristband, you'll follow the red numbers, and if you have a blue wristband, you'll follow the blue numbers. When you get to the cross plate, once you decide which way you need to go, you'll wanna think in opposites, and by that I mean with the gap of your safety hook here, whatever direction you wanna go on the cross plate, you'll have it on the opposite side. For example, right here, I'd like to go to my right, so I'm gonna take the gap of my safety hook and flip it over to the left side. That's gonna allow me to cross the cross plate diagonally right down the center here. And when I do that, it'll let me slide across so I can go into the next section, so on and so forth. All right, and we have several obstacles as you go throughout the course here. This is an example of one of our swinging bridges here. Just make your way across. All right, to keep the course exciting, we also have some swinging logs here to get across. Woo Lots of fun. All right, and right here we have a cargo net. Here's part of the Nile course that you'll be climbing up. Lots of fun. Woo! All right, and also on the long course, which is the Nile course, we have one of these tight ropes to walk across here. Very exciting. Woo! Makes you feel like you're in the circus. All right, moving right along here. When you get to the ladders, you're going to have these T-plates right here. Same as always. You're going to line the gap of your safety hook up with the flat part of this plate right here. As guests get to this point, it can be a little tricky at times, so they might maneuver this around and go, ah, I got it. But then if you do that and realize it's going to snag your rope, not a big deal at all. Just backtrack it, pull all the rope so that it's on your side, and then you can slide it on through the way it needs to go. Also, when you're climbing these ladders, if you need to use two hands, it's helpful to reach around with your other hand through the ladder, and that way you can use two hands to shimmy this up those plates there. All right. And as you make your way through the course, if you find that you're having a difficult time with your equipment being able to reach up onto a zip line, not to worry, we have boxes on the course for that exact reason. Feel free to go ahead and move these around. They're all connected on with a rope. And then go ahead and step up on those to make use of those anywhere you need to. All right. So now we're at a zip line here. You'll be able to tell it's a zip line because there's nothing above it or below it to hang on to. And at the beginning and end of every zip line will be a nice yellow sign that'll say, attention, quick zip line ahead, slow down at the end can't miss it. When you get to a zip line, it's going to be safest to put your pulley on first. So we'll go ahead and get that out. And when you get to the zip line, your pulley can connect on either direction. It doesn't matter as long as you have it sitting on the wheels here. Once that's attached, we're going to bring our safety hook right on out there. And you're going to simply take your safety hook. There's a little notch on the back of your pulley, and that's going to simply rest on the top there. It's going to carry it across while you zip. When you're ready to zip line, you're going to have your weaker hand resting on top, making sure that your gloves are not in front of the wheels here. Your stronger hand is going to follow behind as your brake hand. And about the last five or ten feet of the zip line, as you feel you need to slow yourself down, you're going to press and drag with your stronger hand, just like you're giving somebody a high five with an open palm. That pressure and friction is what slows you down. I'm going to show you how that should look. When you're all set to go, you're going to sit all the way down into your harness, just like you're sitting into a swing. When you're ready to go, simply lean back, pick your feet up. You want to point your feet straight in front of you with your feet lifted, kind of sitting in an L-shaped position. Gravity takes over. You can even cross your feet and have fun. All right. Whoa. All right, well, that's why we don't wear our hats on the course in case they fall off. We don't want them to land into an enclosure down below. Potentially harmful for these nice alligators that are below us here. Along with cell phones and chewing gum, we don't want to bring those up on the course. Best to leave those on the ground. All right, so if a staff person ever comes up to help you on the course, though, we will be required to wear these helmets as we come to assist you. However, when you're on the course as a guest, you will not need them. Now we're looking cool. Moving right along. Once you get to the end of a zip line here, this is where your pulley can go ahead and come right back onto your harness belt there. Once you have that connected, 
Go ahead and move your safety hook over the straight plate here. Line the gap up, that'll slide right on through. Once you are all clear of the zip line, that's a good time to go ahead and shake the cable there so the next person in line knows it's all clear to zip. More often than not though, if you can see the red pad and there's no one standing in front of it, you pretty much know it's all clear to go. Now, if uh, for any reason, say that you don't make it all the way across the zip line, uh, it might look something like so. As you go through the zip line, make sure you don't grab the cable to stop yourself. You'll find out very quickly that it will stop you very quickly. If that happens, not a big deal. You can always check out the gators down below if you wish, and then just realize you'll need to turn yourself around, reach back, and you're gonna hand over hand. Pull yourself to that next platform on the other side. Bringing yourself in hand over hand. And if this is too difficult for you, not to worry, myself or somebody in a green shirt is going to go out there and zip out to you and then pull you across the other side if you need it. All right, as you go through the course, we do have water fountains up there. You want to make sure you're staying hydrated. I hope you take a minute to enjoy the awesome wildlife that we have here below you. And I hope you enjoy your day here at Crocodile Crossing at the St. Augustine Alligator Farm. Bye. You want to go on an adventure? Good boy! <laughs> He's gonna <want> that. <laughs>